Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. Today we have a, a really nice pair of uh, Kreuter pliers. And if you remember a little bit about Kreuter history, uh, about 1859, August Kreuter came here from Germany at the age of 22. He started working for a firearms uh, company and uh, soon after developed his own tooling and manufacturing company. Um, by 1902, he uh, built up the company, was doing really well, decided to sell it to his son, Arthur sells the company to his son. His son, who has been working for the company for years, uh, is really good and uh, takes over and expands the line, not just uh, pliers, but also punches and, uh, and chisels and ticket punches and, and other things, and, and they're doing really well. Okay, fast forward to 1914, World War I comes along, and by this time, Kreuter is well known in the manufacturing businesses and he gets a uh, contract with the military to produce among other things these uh, wire cutting pliers and uh, I have a set of these I have a couple sets uh, that I saved as original but I wanted to take this one set and do it as kind of a tribute to the Croyder manufacturing company which I'm making up a board like they used to have with the polished tools so uh, let's go downstairs and get started on working on these beautiful pliers. Okay, today's project, I've been sitting on these for a while and I, I had a, a my, in mind what I wanted to do with these. Now, you can see these are Croyder, uh, Croyder and Company Incorporated in Newark, New Jersey, Pat Pending, and these are US markings. So I think it might've been like a military plier. Really nice, the drawers are excellent. Uh, just an unusual pair of pliers. Uh, I guess these are about nine inches or so just a, uh, a really nice set But they have the typical black or I don't know what kind of coating they put on it a little bit of rust I had an idea what I wanted to do with this So I hope it comes out the way I want. Let's go check it out and get started Now the stripper and the wire brush makes quick work of getting in between those letters to get out all that paint from the pliers Then over to the wire brush Okay, here we are at our post uh, stripper and um, wire brush evaluation. Now, if you notice here, these were meant to be painted, obviously, because they didn't take the care to grind down, to finish grinding all the, you know, it's kind of a rough uh, casting, because they knew it was going to be painted, and that rough surface actually helps uh, for the paint to adhere. But uh, they gave a little bit here, a little bit of a smoothness on the outside of the handles, but... Um, Everywhere else, it's a little bit rough. You know, see up here, they give a quick grind. You know, I'm sure these were done probably for, uh, you know, they were trying to kick these out and make as much profit as they could, so they figured they were gonna, and I'm sure the military, one of the specifications was they wanted anti-glare. So they probably said, you know, we wanted it to be black and whatnot, but um, you can see it was a quick grind here. They didn't touch any of this. This is a little bit difficult because now, trying to work your way around the belt or whatever but you see what it looks like see the grinding marks the inside uh was was pretty well rusted but you know we got that all the rust taken off with the wire brush so now we're going to see what we can do with the belt sander let's get to it now the steel on these pliers is very very hard so uh trying to get around that captive rivet was difficult by hand but then we took it over to the buffer after sanding for a real long time and we would buff out some of those scratches and whatnot after the buffer, we uh, took it, taped it up, painted it, and my favorite part, you remember what it looked like before we started. Okay, we're calling these pliers done. We are finished. And let me tell you, I will never attempt another plier restoration with that captive rivet in there. Unless I could take these pliers apart, uh, it's, it's just a, a lesson in futility to try and uh, do this. But I was able to get it done. And we got it down to a super polish... Uh, surface and it uh we're able to save the lettering you could see the croyder uh company newark new jersey and the u.s markings on both sides and what i want to say about these pliers is you know they tout these new extreme high leverage pliers with the rivet so close to the cutting surface well this is 1914 they already knew about that that's old technology but they're touting it as new and um with the longer handles i'll show you how that works in a minute but uh, polished out the sides and and um, again I have some other ones in original condition but uh, really nice unusual pair of pliers but they they weren't as useful as most other pliers because of the the short jaw length you really couldn't use it for nuts and bolts and stuff so these were relegated to the back of toolboxes and whatnot in there they're not rare but uh, still interesting and I like the shape let me show you how they work okay here we have an old coat hanger which would uh, 
that is about the same thickness as barbed wire and, and strength. Uh, and you could see here with the, the cutting surface, and you see they had little gripping surfaces on each side of the cutter, which would uh, help it hold. And again, the teeth are in really good shape. So let me show you how this works. By putting this in here, you know, you see how quickly and easily that cuts through that. And these are, you know, 1914 circa. And then you could do your bending or whatever you had to do. So uh, as far as that goes, uh, the plier really works well still. The cutters are excellent shape and the high leverage works excellent. So in closing, we have our 1914 World War I fencing pliers made by Kreuter and Company, Newark, New Jersey. I thank you very much for tuning in. Have a nice day. Take care. Bye-bye.